On day one, I spawned in as Nemo. I'm so small, I better be careful. I also noticed I only had three hearts. This was going to be really difficult. Nemo! Huh? I looked behind me and saw my dad, Marlin. He was swimming out of a small cave towards me. You need to get inside, it's not safe. I hurried inside just as a scuba diver appeared. He took his net and snatched my dad. Dad! I tried to swim toward him, but he yelled back at me. No, stay inside. I'll be okay, I promise. The scuba diver swam away, leaving me all alone. I felt really sad, but it was getting dark. I needed to stay safe in the cave and wait until morning to go looking for my dad. On day two, I woke up to the sun shining into the cave. I looked around. Dad? Then I remembered what had happened to him. I got really sad again. I'll find you, Dad. I promise. I swam out of the cave to find materials to build some weapons. I managed to make a crafting table, which helped me to craft a pickaxe and sword. Now I feel more ready if that scuba diver comes back. I continued swimming in the reef and discovered that there weren't a lot of other fish around. Hey, get down here. Huh? I looked down and saw a shrimp waving at me. I swam down to him. What do you think you are doing? The reef isn't safe, especially closer to the surface. Not since the human has been coming around. Yeah, I saw him yesterday. He trapped my dad. I'm sorry. Do you have anyone else to look out for you? No, I'm alone. I could tell the shrimp felt bad for me. He scurried back into his hole and returned with some kelp. Here, take this. You need it more than me. Thank you. I swam carefully back to my cave with the food. I'm going to protect everyone. They all seem too scared and someone needs to stick up for them. I arrived at my cave, a plan starting to form in my mind. On day three, I gathered some more sand and even managed to find some gravel. I started to make a little base for myself around my cave. I wanted to make a dome so that the humans couldn't get in. I got part of the foundation done, but I needed to do some other things to get the dome figured out. All of a sudden, I was smacked from behind. I looked and noticed an eel. Hey, get away! I used my new weapon to smack him back. He got me down to one heart, but I finally managed to defeat him. You messed with the wrong fish. I felt my strength grow, and I leveled up into a larger fish. Hey, I have six hearts now. Yes. Neat. I also noticed that I could swim faster since my fins were bigger. Wow. I decided to call it a day. I was beat. On days four to five, I gathered some more materials to build the base. I managed to build a furnace and smelted some sand to make some glass for the dome. I was swimming around when I noticed some bigger fish trying to trap some colorful fish. I swam up to attack the large fish. Hey, get away from them! The colorful fish scattered and the large fish attacked. I managed to get a bunch of hits in and managed to defeat all the fish. Hey! Huh? I looked down and saw a fish lying on a rock. It was one of the ones I had hit with my sword. I guess he had tried to swim away. I swam down to him. What were you doing to those fish? We work for the scuba diver. He guarantees us food if we help him capture fish. That's awful. It's life. We need food to live. He tried to smack me again, but I managed to get a hit in. He yelled, and then he disappeared. How sad. How could he betray his own kind? I swam back to the base, contemplating what I had just heard. On days six to eight, I crafted some more glass for the dome. It was starting to look really awesome. I also used some of the materials to make myself a better sword and tools. If that scuba diver comes, I'll be ready for him. I went venturing out, being careful to avoid the surface. I came across a large mound of sand and began to gather it when I was hit by something. I turned and saw a jellyfish. He was ready to strike again. Nobody wants you here. I smacked him and before I knew it, he was gone. That was super easy with my new sword. I was feeling good. The reef was just a little safer already. On days nine to 10, I went venturing a little further. I managed to gather some more supplies when suddenly I heard some screaming. I swam toward the sound and saw a blue fish being grabbed by the scuba diver. Leave her alone. I drew my sword and managed to hit the scuba diver's hand. He let go of the blue fish who swam away. If I can't have her, then I'll have you. The scuba diver grabbed at me and almost managed to get me. I was fast, but he was faster. I swam away, knowing that it was my only chance to get out of this situation. I hid inside the cavity of a rock. The scuba diver retreated, and I let out some bubbles in relief. 
That was close. I didn't realize that the bluefish had swam into the same cavity in the rock as me. I swam out in surprise. Thanks for saving me. I don't know what I would have done without you. Of course, I'm here to try to protect the reef. I invited the blue fish back to the base where it would be safe for her. She happily agreed. I'm Dory, by the way. Nice to meet you. On days 11 to 12, I helped Dory to make a little home for herself. She seemed to really like it. I even said it reminded her of her old home. Where is your home? Actually, I don't remember. She was an odd one, but I liked her. I went out to gather some better materials in a nearby cave, but then a group of eels attacked me. Ah, get away from me! They were too strong, so I went to a different cave. I was swimming around for a while, but then I saw some iron. Yes. That's exactly what I need. I mined out as much as I could before heading back to the base. I made myself an iron sword, pickaxe, and some armor. This'll show them. I went back to the cave with the eels and I attacked. In no time, they were all gone. Take that. I went into the cave and sure enough, there was more iron. Cool, this'll set me up for a while. I went back to the base and made some more tools. With those, I made some minor improvements to the base. It was starting to look really good. On days 13 to 15, I went out to learn more about this scuba diver. I needed to find my dad and all the other fish he was taking. I swam around the reef to gather more information. More fish were out today, but not a lot. Hey, do you know where the scuba diver is taking the fish he's capturing? Everyone kept swimming away from me. Huh, I wonder why everyone is so skittish. I finally happened upon an older snail who was willing to talk to me. Everything was peaceful in the reef for a long time. Then one day, a large shadow was cast over us. We looked up and saw a monstrous machine churning in the water. It's called a boat. Boat? I said the word. It sounded weird to me. The scuba diver can't stay underwater like us, so he drives the boat. At first, he was just here to take pictures. Then one day, he started snatching fish in bags, or even shooting them with his harpoon. He is a bad man. I was grateful that someone was willing to talk to me, but now I was terrified. The scuba diver sounded really strong and capable. I was just a little fish. What could I do? On days 16 to 19, I woke up and couldn't find Dory anywhere. I hope she didn't swim off on her own. I went outside the base and saw Jacques waving at me again. You better hurry. The octopus just took your friend. Dory? Yes. She was swimming up near the surface and singing to herself. An octopus came by and grabbed her before she even knew what was happening. Jacques pointed me in the direction of the octopus lair and I took off. The octopus lair was more of a sandy hill covered with seaweed, but it was something. I hurried and swam inside to save my friend. Hey, it's you! I looked and saw Dory. She was with another fish who looked pretty beaten up. Watch out! I turned and saw the octopus try to attack me. I hurried and drew my sword before he could get a hit in. He tried to maneuver around me, but I was able to get some really good hits in. Before I knew it, he was gone. Just then, I leveled up into an even stronger clownfish. I felt my fins grow and I swam around to test them out. I was super fast now. I could create a wall of bubbles. I'm so happy you found me. Also, this is Gil. The other fish swam up to me. Thank you for saving my life. That was really impressive. Thanks. I am happy to protect the fish in the reef. We need it more than ever, especially with this scuba diver around. Are you going to fight him? I'm not sure. He's so strong and way bigger than me. I know of an item that could help. Huh? It was lost in the sea a long time ago, but it might be the answer to your problem. That was the best news I had gotten all day. Maybe there was a way to fight the scuba diver after all. I want to hear all about it, but you should stay at our base. It'll be safer there. Gil happily agreed to come with us and we headed back to our home. On days 20 to 22, we arrived back at the base, but it was being attacked by skeletons? Ah, oh, gross! I went at them with my sword and fought them off easily. They all dropped a bunch of bones. Maybe they would come in handy later. I was happy that Gil was staying with us too, but I wanted everyone to know that this was a safe place to stay. A statue would be a good idea. I came up with an idea, but I needed to gather some supplies first. I gathered a lot of kelp and even managed to find some sea cucumbers. Perfect! 
I knew I needed more for later, so I planted a few and then used the bones from the skeletons to make some bone meal. I fed the bone meal to the sea cucumbers. I won't be running out of those anytime soon. I went to work on the base of the statue. Can you tell what it's going to be? And if you like swimming along on our adventures, be sure to watch more of my videos by searching for Zozo. That's Z-O-Z-O. -Z -O. And subscribe too, since we sure would love to see you around here more often. On days 23 to 26, some skeletons attacked again. I wasn't too nervous though, they were easy to defeat. They dropped more bones, but I noticed that another one dropped some sea lanterns. Wow. This would be perfect to make the dome more bright. They were looking really good. I started to place them around the base and inside the dome. It was looking brighter already. I was outside looking for some more materials when a yellow fish swam up to me. Hello, someone told me that this is a safe place to stay. My family was taken by the scuba diver and I don't have a home to go back to. I knew exactly how this fish felt. Please come in, you are more than welcome to stay here. The fish told me his name was Bubbles as we went inside. I started on making some better houses for Bubbles and Gil. They weren't anything fancy, but they were safe. I made sure to smelt some more glass so that we could expand the dome out. It was looking really great. On days 27 to 31, I went to chat with Gil. I wanted to know more about the item he had told me about earlier. My grandfather told me about an old wise turtle that was a protector of the reef a long time ago. But like now, humans kept invading, stealing fish away, and polluting the ocean. The turtle decided to go to Poseidon to bargain for an item that would protect them. In return, he crafted the turtle a special trident. Poseidon? No way! I know, right? Anyway, the old turtle takes this special trident, but Poseidon says it will only work for those who have pure intentions to protect the creatures of the sea. Makes sense. It gave the turtle the ability to call the lightning down and control the water. Wow! But the best part was the last gift it granted to the wielder. The ability to walk on land like a human if needed. That's amazing! So, where is the trident now? That's the tricky part. After the turtle passed on, so many fish and creatures wanted the trident for themselves. They fought over it. Because of their greed, it was broken into three pieces and scattered across the ocean. There are rumors as to where they are, but nobody has been able to find all of them. This was a lot to take in. My grandfather told me he had heard of one that was guarded by a shark near a shipwreck. It wasn't a lot to go on, but it was a start. I started out toward the shipwreck that Gil was talking about, though I was a little nervous about the shark. As I approached, I didn't see any shark. Then he came out from behind the hull of the ship. He's pretty big. I was nervous, but I knew I had a job to do. So I charged at the shark and attacked. He was taken aback and tried to get a hit in. He was a good fighter, but I wasn't doing too bad myself. After a minute, I could tell he was really struggling. I was about to make my final attack when he swam away. Huh, okay, I wasn't expecting that. I went and looked around the ship, but it was empty. I was a little confused. I wonder where the trident piece could be. On days 32 to 35, I swam out of the ship, but I heard someone calling me. I looked down and saw some crabs hiding under some coral. I swam down to them. Hey, are you looking for the trident piece? Yeah, how did you know? We've seen a lot of fish come this way. Not nearly as brave as you. Most have retreated, but this isn't the ship you're looking for. So I gathered. All of a sudden, the crab shrieked and scurried away. I looked behind me and saw the scuba diver. You're not getting me today. Then he took out a harpoon and shot me. It paralyzed me and I sank to the bottom of the ocean. Oh no. I struggled but couldn't get out. Then I saw one of the crabs crawl out of the sand and give me a milk bottle, which cleared the paralysis effect. Go! I swam toward the scuba diver, creating a wall of bubbles so he couldn't see me. He dropped something and I hurried to grab it before racing back to the crabs. Hurry, you can come with me. The crabs rushed out of their hole and together we hurried towards the base. On days 36 to 39, we arrived back at the base. I realized that I had picked up a flashlight. Maybe it would come in handy later. I started on a little house for the crabs to live in. They were super grateful that I had helped them. Hey, the ship you're looking for is sunken into the depths of the drop-off. At least that's what we've heard. This was great news. Except it's guarded by a huge monster. Nobody has been able to get into the ship. Okay, less great news. But I needed to do some things before I left. I worked on the statue for a little while, planting new sea cucumbers as I went. 
it was starting to look a little more like what I wanted. On days 40 to 43, Gil told us that his friend Flo needed help. We invited her into the dome and heard her out. My friend Peach, she's a lobster. She was taken by some eels. Huh? They had been terrorizing her for food, but when she couldn't give them any more, they kidnapped her. I can help her. Just tell me where I need to go. Flo directed me to a small sunken statue that the eels like to hang around. She's probably there. Please, go help her. I promised I would, and I headed out. I made sure to be stealthy as I went along. After a while, I saw the statue Flo had told me about. It looked like a human, holding some sort of bull. Sure enough, there were a bunch of eels and a colorful lobster sitting in the bull. I charged. Hey, you give her back! The eels reared up and went to attack. There were a lot of them, and they were getting hits in. I barely managed it, but soon after, they were all gone. Thanks for saving me, mister. No problem. I'm a friend of Flo's. Oh, thank goodness. I noticed a small hole in the base of the statue and looked inside. There was a chest full of prismarine crystals and one shaped prismarine. Nice. I headed out with Peach back to our base. Once we arrived, Flo was super happy to see her friend. They thanked me and then I went right to making Peach a little home. I then made something for Flo as well. Then I took the prismarine crystals I had found and smelted them into shaped prismarine. Then I used that to make some new prismarine weapons and armor. Sweet, now I'm ready to take on that monster. On days 44 to 49, I swam to the drop off and looked down. It sure was dark down there. Oh wait, I have a flashlight. I took out the flashlight I had grabbed from the scuba diver and turned it on. It worked. I started to swim down into the depths. I was swimming for a long time when I finally started to see a ship. Then I saw something moving toward me. It was a goblin shark. Nope, not today. I took out my sword and braced myself. The goblin shark attacked, but I created my wall of bubbles, distracting it. I hurried and swam into the ship, turning off my flashlight. It was pitch black. Hey, is someone there? Huh? A voice was whispering from the corner. I didn't dare turn my flashlight on yet. I'm a friend. I'm looking for the missing trident piece. Is that what this is? I thought it was just a fancy stick, but I did manage to grab it. I snuck past the goblin shark to get in, but I haven't been able to get out. Why are you down here? I'm a treasure hunter. I heard there was some stuff down here, but nobody mentioned the shark. I'll get us out of here, don't you worry. Just follow the sound of my voice. Then, when I say swim, you swim. Okay. I found an opening and I turned on the flashlight. Swim! We swam up as fast as we could. The other fish behind me kept whispering to himself. Just keep swimming, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. After what seemed like forever, we finally got up past the drop off. I finally looked at the other fish. I bloat. He was a puffer fish wow. and he seemed really tired. He was also holding what I assumed was part of the trident. Here, take this, huh? I don't want it. He gave me the pole piece and I studied it. It looked like it had carvings on it. Hey, thanks for saving me, by the way. That was gnarly. Of course. How about we get back to my base so you can rest? Sounds good to me. And with that, we headed back to the base. On days 50 to 53, I helped Bloat get comfortable at the base, and then I headed back out to look for some more pieces of the trident. Someone had to know something. On my way out and about, I saw a huge crater in the sea bottom. There were sharks swimming all around including the one from the first shipwreck I had gone to. It looked like they had someone trapped in a cage of some sort. Hey, you let them go! I raced down with my improved swimming abilities and attacked the first shark. I was able to take him out and then went to attack his friends. After just a few moments, I was able to fend them all off. I went up to the cage and noticed another shark inside. Ah! I went to swim away, but he called out to me. Hey, wait, don't leave me. I won't eat you. I swam back to him, a bit apprehensively. You don't eat fish? No, fish are friends, not food. Oh, that's nice to hear. I unlocked the cage and let the small shark out. Thank you. All those other sharks were making fun of me and decided it would be hilarious if they put me in a cage. I'm so sorry they did that to you. He nodded. What brings you all the way out here? I told him all about the scuba diver and the legendary trident I was trying to put together again. I showed him part of the trident I had. The shark got excited. 
Say, I have something that looks like that. The shark, whose name I learned was Bruce, swam a little further into the crater. There was a little alcove that held a small chest. I opened it, and sure enough, there was a piece of the trident. Yes. Whoa, thanks! No problem. The sharks found that here, but they figured it was some sort of fancy stick. But we kept it anyway. I tried to put the pieces together, but nothing happened. I would probably need all of the pieces before it would meld back together. I invited Bruce back to the base. We might need to expand it a little bit, since you are bigger than most of the other fish living there. I'll be sure to help out. We headed back to the base, ready to make some big renovations. On days 54 to 57, Bruce and I arrived back at the base. At first, everyone was a little scared of Bruce, but after a while, they all started to warm up to him. They even helped me make some improvements for him. We built another dome attached to the main dome. This way, people could have more space for themselves. I also made myself a little chest to store the trident pieces in. I didn't want to carry them all the time and risk someone stealing them from me while I was outside the dome. I was about to make some more improvements to the base when Dory swam right up next to me. Hello, could I get your help with something? Sure, Dory. What is it? Oh, I just forgot. She swam away for a little bit, then came back a moment later. I remember. Could you help me find some purple shells? Huh? Purple shells? Yes, it's very important. It was an odd request, but I decided to help her. We ventured out together and found a dozen or so shells in varying sizes. We went back to the base, and I gave Dory the shells I had found. What are they for? You'll see. She left for a while, and I thought she had completely forgotten about the shells. It wasn't until later that she swam back up to me. I have something for you. She held out a necklace made of some purple shells. Oh wow, thanks Dory. I put it on. I actually felt happier. You're a good friend. Dory hugged me and then swam away. What a cute friend. On days 58 to 62, I gathered some more supplies for the statue. Flo and Gil even helped me with gathering and building some parts of it. It was looking really nice. We were heading back inside the dome when we noticed that there were some of the scuba divers' minion fish attacking the base. Get away, you traitors! I smacked them with my sword. I swam around and noticed that everyone was there except Bloat. I looked in his house and noticed a note. It was from the scuba diver telling him to look for the legendary item at the ship and to infiltrate my base. Uh -oh. Bloat was a traitor! I hurried and went to the chest near my cave, and just as I had suspected, the trident pieces were gone. I went back to the base and told everyone that Bloat stole the trident pieces. Everyone saw how upset I was and started to all talk at the same time. It was a little too much for me, so I went into my cave to think. What am I going to do now? I looked at Bloat's note again and noticed something on the back. There was a map with a location circled. This must be where he's going next. I've got to stop him before it's too late. On days 63 to 66, I traveled to the location on the map. It was a rock formation with all kinds of coral growing on it. Then a fish emerged from the coral. He had blended right in. Get away from here! We don't want any more trouble! He tried to bat at me with his fins, but I backed up. Trouble? I'm here to stop all the trouble. The fish looked at me again. I'm looking for the third trident piece. I was led here with a map. Do you know where it is? Yeah, I do. But some other fish came by a little while ago asking the same question. In fact, some of them said they would be back. Just then, I saw the minion fish swimming up to us. I drew my sword. Stop bothering these innocent fish. I charged and attacked. Before long, they were all gone. That was impressive. I swam back to the camouflage fish. Here, I think you need this after that fight. Huh? He handed me a burger and said it was a Krabby Patty, whatever that was. Thanks, so can you tell me where the trident piece is? It's hiding in the lair of the large glow squid. It's basically impossible to get to, but that puffer fish and his goons might have a chance. That must have been bloat. The fish told me exactly where the lair was and I swam as fast as my fins would go. On days 67 to 70, I made it to the lair of the large glow squid. It was an old underwater temple. Outside of it were some minion fish. They looked like they were guarding it. Then I saw bloat and a few more minion fish emerge from the large cave. I charged at them. You traitor, I thought you were my friend. Bloat saw me and got scared. He tried to hide behind the minion fish, but I easily took a few of them out. Bloat tried to swim away, but I smacked him with my sword. He looked at me angrily, and then he puffed up. I 
felt a sharp pain in my side, and then I blacked out. On day 71 to 74, I woke up. I felt really sick, and there was a pain in my side. I looked and saw one of Bloat's needles lodged in between my stripes. I pulled it out and groaned. Ouch! I knew I needed to check the lair, so I swam down and saw an alcove with a chest. It was empty. Bloat must have gotten the item before I blacked out. I didn't have much strength, so I ate some kelp. I felt so sick and knew I needed to get back to the base to rest up. I made the long journey home, wondering what my next move would be. On day 75 to 78, I made it back to the base and rested for a little while. Once I was feeling more like myself, I made some improvements to the base. I added to the domes and made some lights. I also started on a new dome in case we had more fish arrive. I was about to clean out Bloat's little alcove when I heard a weird noise outside the dome. I went out to see and it was Bloat. What are you doing here? I was trying to sneak back in to get some of my things. Get out of my way. You traitor, you aren't welcome here. I lunged at Bloat, making a wall of bubbles to distract him. Then I slashed at him with my sword. I wasn't going to let him knock me out again. He was very disoriented, and before long, I took him out. Then, just like before, I felt my strength surge, and I leveled up into an adult clownfish. I now had 15 hearts. Yeah, I'm unstoppable! I looked up and noticed that Bloat had dropped something. I was hoping that it was part of the trident, but it looked like a paper. He must have already given the trident pieces to the scuba diver. I looked closer at the paper and realized it was a map of where the scuba diver docked his boat. It looked like it was on a schedule and switched every couple of days. This is good information. I also checked out Bloat's alcove, and sure enough, I found some good stuff, like refined prismarine ingots and some healing potions. This is just what I need. I felt bad about Bloat, but ultimately, he had made his choice. Hopefully now, it would be easier to defeat the scuba diver. On days 79 to 84, I traveled to the next location where the scuba diver's boat was supposed to be. I looked around the seaweed field and there was no boat. Huh, I wonder where it could be. I waited it out for a little while, but then I noticed a little movement in the seaweed. I drew my sword in preparation, but then a little sea turtle popped out. Whoa, don't hurt me. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm looking for the boat that's supposed to be here right now. Oh uh, yeah, that usually leaves here in the early morning, so you're late. Okay, well, I guess I should go track him down. Wait, could you help me first? Something fell out of the boat when the scuba diver left. I've been tracking him ever since he stole my dad. I think that it might be important. I felt sorry for this little guy. So many fish and sea creatures were suffering just because the scuba diver was selfish. Of course I'll help. We looked through the seaweed for a little longer before I saw something partially buried in the sand. Hey, I found it! The little sea turtle swam over to me and we looked at the paper. It was a map, just like mine, with the boat docking locations, but there had been a change. Huh? The boat was heading for one other stop, and then, my reef! He'll be there in just a few days! I need to go back and warn everyone! I invited the little turtle to come along with me. I learned his name was Squirt. Thanks for helping me! No problem. We'll get your dad back, Squirt. We made our way out of the seaweed and back to the base. On days 85 to 89, Squirt and I were about to reach the base when Jacques waved me over. I swam up to him. I heard you needed some help. From who? It doesn't matter. I just hear these things. You need a way to get on the boat, right? Until I can find the trident, yeah. Jacques went into his hole and then pulled out some sort of helmet. This could hold you while you're out on the ship. Wow, this is actually really helpful, Jacques. Thanks. He seemed really pleased with himself, and I invited him to live at the base again. He finally agreed. He had a lot of stuff hidden in his hole, but after a few trips, he was settled in. To thank me for helping him move in, he gave me a smithing table and some paintings. It was good to have friends. On days 90 to 94, I made some upgrades. I went to work, smithing my prismarine sword using the refined prismarine ingots I had found in Bloat's things. It made my sword much stronger. I also reforged my armor. Wow, this is amazing. Too bad Bloat had to be a traitor. He would have made a good team. I also worked on some more improvements around the base. The domes were looking awesome. Hopefully it would be safe enough from the scuba diver and whatever his plans might be. On days 95 to 97, we finally finished the statue. It looked amazing and I was super proud of all my friends for helping me out. 
I was admiring the statue when Squirt swam up to me. That kind of looks like my dad. That's so cool. I love sea turtles. I always wanted to meet one, and now I have. Sweet, dude. Totally. It was a nice little moment. On day 98, I made my final preparations to get to the boat. Squirt volunteered to lead me to the scuba diver's boat. It'll be awesome, dude. Just leave it to me. I gave the map to Squirt, and we made our final preparations. Hey, before we go kick some scuba diver bum, be sure to subscribe. We want you to see the cool stuff we'll do next. And with that, we headed toward the surface. On day 99, we swam up toward the boat together. There were some minion fish along the way, but with my new sword, we took them out easily. We made it to the back of the boat, and I threw down the item Jacques gave me, which turned into a fish mech suit. I swam into the head, which was built like a fishbowl, letting me breathe even when outside of the water. I got on the boat with Squirt, and we looked around. The boat was pretty big. It might take some time before we find our families. We looked around the lower deck, and then went up the stairs to the upper deck. There were some fish tanks up there. Dad! I saw him immediately, his orange scales shimmering among the other fish. Hey, I told you to stay safe down below. No, Dad, I'm done hiding. The reef needs protecting, and I'm going to be the one to do it. He seemed taken aback, but then he smiled at me. I'm so proud of you. And with that, I broke the fish tanks, scooping the fish into buckets I found and throwing them back into the ocean. Hey, Squirt! Huh? I looked and saw a larger tank with a sea turtle. Dad! I broke that tank as well, letting Squirt's dad out. Rad, man. Thanks for the assist. Of course, Mr... Crush, man. Crush. Crush and Squirt thanked me and jumped overboard with the rest of the fish. I saw my dad looking at me from the water's surface. Look out! I turned around and saw some seagulls. They were trying to grab me out of the fishbowl. On day 100, I fought off the seagulls. They kept screeching at me, but I didn't care. I needed to find the trident. I maneuvered around the seagulls, and after a few hits, the rest of them flew away scared. How oh, pathetic. We turned and saw the scuba diver, no longer in his gear. But he had the trident in his hands. Uh -oh. He had managed to put it together. It's time for you to leave the reef. Not a chance. The scuba diver ran at me, ready to strike. I aimed for his hand that was holding the trident and hit him with my sword. He dropped the trident and I rushed toward it on the floor. All of a sudden, I felt an amazing power flow through my body. The suit powered up and grew in size. I felt so much stronger and faster. No! The scuba diver ran away toward a room. He shut the door behind him. Coward, come out and fight me. I thought he was trying to get away, but then I heard a loud noise. He broke open the door, revealing himself in an even bigger diving suit. He had one hand that shot harpoons, and the other was some sort of electric fist. The scuba diver was scary, but I wasn't going to let that stop me. This ends here. I charged, and so did the scuba diver. We exchanged a lot of blows with our weapons, but then I decided to have some fun. I urged the water to create a giant wave that rocked the boat. I also summoned the lightning to come down from the sky, striking the diver. He was looking pretty rough, and I wasn't making it easy for him. You're just a fish. I'm a human. You will never defeat me. I channeled the power of the storm into the trident before throwing it at him one last time, summoning a huge bolt of lightning. The sky boomed with thunder, and there was a huge flash of light. When it subsided, I saw that the diver was gone. I had defeated him. Yeah! I raised the trident in triumph before swimming back down to the base. Everyone cheered as they saw me. The reef was finally safe, and I was back with my dad. Everything was back to the way it should be.